I can't believe we made more than 100 videos and not one on the reversal. Come on, let's do this. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King. Today we're going to talk about a truly iconic watch. When I talk to my friends about watch collecting and also when I read forums online or articles, many people mention the Reverso as being one of the most iconic watches and cases ever produced. People who collect watches and want to enter the spectrum of price points, let's say from six to 15,000, usually ask themselves, what should they buy? Often the typical answers are the Rolex Submariner, Cartier Santos, Omega Speedmaster, and in the same sentence, the Jaeger Le Coultre Reverse is often mentioned. It's truly a very unique design and not many watch prints have reproduced a case which is reversible, like on the Reverso. Some other reversible cases would be the Cartier Basculant, which was actually produced only one year after the first Reverso watches were produced. So Reverso was produced in 1931 or launched and the Cartier Basculant in 1932, just one year after. And actually it was created by the same company. Another watch would be the Cartier Tank, which also reverses. Then we've got the Antoine Prezioso B-Side Turbion, which has also a reversible case. Then you have Beauvais. So Beauvais uses a different style. You have to, from what I remember or the last time I saw one, you have to flip the straps. You cannot, let's say, reverse the case on itself. And one the more affordable option would be the old version of the Chrono Swiss Cabrio, which also is reversible. If you know other models with this feature, please leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to learn about new pieces that I don't know. One of my favorites this year, and for people who love independent watchmaking, you'll probably agree, was the Debetune Kind of 2. It has two different dials. One is more classical, and the other one features a beautiful tourbillon, and the finishing throughout the whole watch is just spectacular. The Gigi Lacoutre Reverso is not just known for the case. Also, the brand is known to be, quote-unquote, the watchmaker's watchmaker. So they were creating movements for the Holy Trinity, for example, which is Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, and Vachon Constantin. So up to today, they have a total of 1,200 calibers, which they developed and made in-house, which is probably on top, if not the best company in Switzerland to do so. César Detroit, who was a close associate of Jacques David Lecoultre, who was at the time distributing luxury Swiss wristwatches, he came back from a trip in India in 1930. After witnessing a polo game where he saw a crystal on a glass break and crack, he came back to Switzerland with a problem and he wanted to solve it. He set the engineer Alfred Chavot of the task of inventing a case which would protect, you know, future incidents like this to happen. In 1931, the reverse came to life with this revolutionary idea and it also used Luminola. So back at the time, this stainless steel watch, which you basically protected the time, or let's say the face of it, was one of the first sports watches. The watch model we're going to talk about today came first to life in 1994. It's the time where Gégé Lacoutre created the Duo Face collection. Why Duo Face? You guessed it. It has two watch styles in one single case. Having a reverse with two different dials is something I really like. For example, on this side we have a, let's say, classical white dial, which is more elegant, and then when we flip the case, like this, we have a black dial which is more sporty with luminous hands and luminous indexes. Also both dials feature a different type of decoration on them and different finishes. The case is neatly constructed and super well built. As you can see it's actually very thin and the case slides like this throughout. And then if you want to flip it, you can see there's a stopper here at the bottom, which basically holds it in position. You flip it around and you tuck it or push it back in. There you go. It makes a nice click. Don't be afraid, you won't break it. Also, this is a special model because it's a travel time. So the front dial is more classical, bright, you know, looks very elegant. Features beautiful brushed parts and also guilloche, which has a nice diamond pattern in the middle of the dial where also the Gégé Lecoultre logo is. And on the sub dial for the small seconds, also the middle part has a beautiful diamond guilloche pattern. The printed Art Deco numerals are on a brushed vertical finish, which just looks stunning and a really nice contrast with the guilloche. So when we turn the watch around, we will, let's say, set this dial for where we are traveling to. So this dial, again, like I said, is more sporty. It has luminous indexes, luminous hands, 
At six o'clock, we have a beautiful day night indicator, which is also Gioche finished. Of course, two different colors to set the day apart from the night. You have the Clos de Paris pattern around the middle dial, again, next to the indexes. And on the bottom, it says travel time, just to remind you what feature you have. You might wonder now how to set this dial because we have only one crown. So with the crown here, you actually change the minutes. So now we pull it out and we change the minutes and now it's gonna be 45. If I turn the dial around, also 45. But then how can you jump the hour hand of the travel time dial? Basically, you have a nice lever here on top of it. In the previous models, there was a little pusher here which you had to engage like you usually do on moon phase watches. But now with this one, it's more easy and also more hidden on top. So basically you would then go like this and just pull it down and the hour would jump. See, very easy. And then when you turn it around, here is still 145 and here it's let's say 645, 745, 8, 9, 1045. Below the case, we have a nice pelage decoration, which is again really neatly made. From the front, the watch looks very rectangular, and it is. But when you turn it around, you'll see how many shapes it actually has. You see the lower and the bottom part of the case, and the lugs are actually bent downwards to improve the wearability on the wrist. It's polished from all sides, and again, the finishing of the case is very well thought through. On the case pack, we have a few inscriptions. Cesare La Culture on top. You can see how water resistant this watch is. It's actually water resistant to 30 meters or the case. And it says a thousand hours control. So what does this mean? This is a 1000 hour internal test by Gisele Lecoultre to ensure that their watches are to their highest standards. It's like a certification tests of a uncased and a cased watch to check the regularity, resistance to temperature changes, atmospheric pressure, robustness to shocks and magnetic fields. Of course, they also test the waterproofness. Making all of this work is the in-house caliber 8548-2. It's a 160 component movement, very neatly decorated and has a 42 hour power reserve. This is a manual winding watch, so be sure to wind it regularly. This watch features a double deployment buckle with a nice Gere La Coultre logo here. The straps you can see are very well made and they feature a very distinct style as well. Since 2011, Gégère Lecoultre partnered up with Casa Faliano. They are known to manufacture polo boots, shoes, leather goods, and now also straps for JLC. Apparently, it takes 24 hours from scratch to the finished product to create each strap. And if you want to change the strap, Gégère Lecoultre has a very wide variety of options. As you can see from the side, the case isn't that high. And this is the large model. And you see, the logs are curved downward, so it doesn't appeal that flat on the wrist. From the side, the case is only 9.2 millimeters thick. I say this because remember, we have two dials, we have an in-house movement, and it's a lot of components. When I turn the watch around, you see how it fits my 18.1 centimeter wrist. The width is 28.3 millimeters, and I measured a lug to lug of 45.2 millimeters. If you wanna change your personality or the mood of the watch, or you maybe go to a different occasion, and you dress down a bit, you just flip the case, and voila, you have a different dial. I used to have a vintage reverse in my collection. It was a very small watch and I quickly sold it because it just didn't fit my wrist all that good. I'm always eyeing the Reverso from the past, which is uh, my favorite one. Maybe you know which one I'm talking about. There's a nice rose gold version with a very simple dial. Looks almost like this one, but when you flip it around, there's a beautiful turbio behind it with Cote de Genève decoration and a power reserve indicator which is actually Guilloche pattern as well. This, I think, is a nice grail piece if you wanna buy a high-end Reverso, or if you have, let's say, all the money in the world, I would definitely get the Gyro Turbion. Those look amazing. This watch was lent to me for the review by Bayer Chronometry in Zurich. And if you would like to buy a watch like this, it would cost you 9,000 Swiss francs in Switzerland. And if you would buy it overseas or maybe in the US, you have to pay approximately 9,600 US dollars. I think for getting two watches for the price of one, it isn't such a bad deal. Let me know in the comment section below, which is your favorite reverse watch so far? Is it the 90th anniversary they dropped this year? Maybe is it a vintage piece? Or would you like a tribute to 1931? Again, leave a comment down below. 
I'm curious to see which one are you gonna pick. On the side, there's a small photo of a watch we'll feature next time on the channel. It's a brand we haven't featured yet, so that's gonna make it slightly easier and it's from a big group. If you know which watch it is, leave a comment down below and maybe, just maybe, you'll guess it right. Like and subscribe and share. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you next week.